Ooh, what's up guys, and of course as always, welcome back to another of course OU Wi-Fi battle, which was really the scavenger. And today going up against a guy named Luke, who are from of course the Twitter group, which is linked down below on Discord. Uh, he calls himself Happy Lidonite, if I can remember correctly there. So with that said, um, he wanted a battle with me and uh, was very honest with that. He didn't know necessarily anything about the smoke and tears, but it could his team could resemble OU. So I'll definitely say that. I give him that. That's, that's that most certainly is OU. Uh, I decided to go for an RU route basically because I feel the lower tiers have a smarter synergy around it. And uh, quite frankly, I felt it was somebody that doesn't know about the smoke too much that uh, it feels more even it out if I actually handicap myself a little bit. So with that said, we see Ferraforn, Toxapex, Landorus, Tapafini, Tyranitar, and Charizard. Charizard clearly a mega form. Now I have seen, of course, Charizard X being run even with Mystic Terrain, but it could also be Charizard Y for a dual weather situation since his team doesn't look to be benefiting from necessarily weathers themselves. I myself is using actually Jolteon, which the specs uses, Scarf, God of War, um, Ghostium, no, Decidu, Decidui, Zium, C, Decidui, Mega Steelix, Dragon Dance for Alligator, and uh, Defog Magic Guard Life Orb, uh, Ziggleth. I'm uh, definitely gonna say that Ziggleth is a great Defog now with Magic Guard and whatnot, and definitely can capitalize on just kept having Heatwave and Psy Shock and just feel alright. Uh, but yeah, from the get go here, it feels like he doesn't have anything to outspeed my Jolteon. So I felt it was very easy to lead off with that, since Ladder is possibly his only Pokemon that could fend it off from the get-go. So with that in mind, let's go, to, of course, to the match. Now, from the get-go here, my opponent is actually going to lead off with his Ferraforn, so that, that felt tough. Uh, there is really nothing to do towards Ferraforn, and he's actually going to showcase Protect here. So it is most certainly a variant with the lead seed, if anything, and possible, of course, stealth rocks and whatnot. So with that in mind, I'm going to switch in my Mytho with my Siglyph, since lead seed is not affecting me. And if you go for stealth rocks, I, I can actually defog them away. And it doesn't pose a threat towards me, as he's going to withdraw his Ferraforn. I did not go for Heatwave, which was something I was, what definitely was thinking, as I'm going to showcase the defog and that uh, there is too early set up anything because Sigilyph just resolves that. So with this in mind, Toxipeg is not a primal threat towards me, as I just go for the easy side shock. And it does 40% roughly. It definitely felt like I needed to have some investment in my special attack and wanted to get this Pokemon out. Now, Skull doesn't do anything towards me, and this is a matchup where eventually Sigilyph will win because I have more roots and side shock than he can do Skulls on me before he will down by damage alone. But with that said though, he's gonna take the more stallier route and just try to stall a PP. At this point, he, yeah, he definitely needed to switch out. This was not a winning matchup, though he's definitely forcing me for a switch, if anything. So with that in mind, I definitely feel like he's gonna keep going for recover. I can bring in Grimlock, which of course is like Mega Steelix, and get those 50% going on. This Mega Steelix actually has a lot of attack and bond with it. So with that in mind, I definitely feel that Mega Steelix can pull that off really nicely and uh, for anybody who's a Transformers fan, Grimlock, you know, the Trinosaurus Transformer, that's where we are at. As my opponent here to go for Magic Code, that's fair all right. Uh, I will not set up Stealth Rocks if I don't need them, and I definitely don't need them more than towards the likes of um, Shards or Earthquake really did those 50%, so I felt that it's very unlikely that he will stay in this time, and now I can go safely for a Stealth Rock this time instead. And uh, Stealth Rock is actually more nerfing and ruining my opponent than it's ruining me, actually. So as long as it doesn't stack too much towards me, I'll definitely won't go for Defog myself. As he's gonna actually go himself for Stealth Rocks as I go for a roll, I was really bad on actually getting in the charts out here. That is not what happened. We had the worst scenario, which is Tabufini. And there is really nothing good towards Tabufini. I can go for Heavy Slam, definitely. But Hydro Pump is one of those things that really, really brings me down. So my easiest switch in here is to try to fend this Pokemon off, and I'll do that with my Consonite, my Decidueye, since if he has Skull, I, actually, I am actually immune to that. So, yeah, he goes for Defog, and I felt the Skull right. My biggest chance to go for a setup, actually, is now. We are, of course, a Spirit Shackle, Leaf Blade, and Shadow Sneak. So he got Shadow Sneak in Ultra Sun and Moon. As he's switching to Um not too big of an issue, actually. Ferraforn, while Jarbolt could do a hefty chunk, uh, I also is to it KOing this Ferraforn. So I don't fear it as it switches in Landris. And surprisingly enough, I'm really gonna say this, I didn't know how strong the Sidui were till I went for that Spirit Shackle, locking him in, and that is close to a KO. 
And of course with Shadow Sneak combination, yeah, that's a guarantee kill. And we get the Lando kill very, very, very early. And that's a massive perk towards us, of course, because Landers is definitely a threat. Now, he's gonna send in Tyranitar. Um, Tyranitar could be KO'd naturally by Leaf Blade towards this. I was fearing the Scarf variant. And luckily, he isn't that, but we do get a lucky crit here. But it stated plus one, yeah, that is a KO. The sand is not a nullifying the, um, the physical aspect. So he brings the Toxapex here, and um, I felt this one on a chance to set up yet again, actually. I was probably, I should have gone for actually the, the CG1C, the Spirit Shackle move, but I didn't do that, and it is unfortunate because we do get burned here, and this is definitely parrying the potential sweep that the CG1 could have, so I felt that, okay, you know, the match is still going on, it is not over, but at the same time, there really aren't that many things I can do, as I just keep going for Sword Sands. At this point, I know it can't hurt me. While I do lack, actually... Um, what do you call it, a uh, roost or anything like that to be able to keep going in this aspect. I can definitely whittle down Toxapex to that point where I can actually wheel him around. So I'll go over the safe Spirit Shackle, basically locking him in there. And it does roughly 50%, but he'd also go for recover here. So at this point, yeah, we're not in a strong position. He can stall out this situation. Um, my best play here is actually go for Leaf Blade and basically hope for a crit. That's necessarily the only way I will be able to pull this off, and I was very aware of that. As I just keep going for the leap, it does roughly 40. Uh, we're plus five, plus the bird, so we're not. There is no reason to go for another soul sense at this point. Uh, I'm better off banking on that crit, but as you guys can see, I am free falling at this point. As uh, my opponent eventually actually will do a bit of a misplay, if you ask me, he'll go for a skull, thinking I was in range of actually being killed by the burn. It is still a toxic pack, so the, the special attack is definitely not there. And I'll get a very, very big opportunity to, even if we went for the bane, Baneful Bunker, I could go for this, of course, the Spirit Shackle move, which is called Sinister Air Raid or something like that, Sinister Arrow Raid. And I can easily go for that secure KO and guarantee in toxic packs out of the way. And that's, that's nice. That's uh, that's really 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 cool. Since Toxapex is a threat, if it, if anything, and Kunsight basically ruined his defensive core. While he still has Ferrothorn and get granted Ferrothorn is a defensive threat, it is not that scary defensively right now due to he actually misses the core about Lando, who definitely are helping ever from quite a lot. So I believe Kunsight did exactly what I needed to do. Unfortunately, my opponent gets up the rocks and goes over protect, so he will let me fall to my burn, but at least that means that the CGI was not killed by my opponent, it falls on its own, and for what is worth, that's kind of cool. So with that said, I'm actually going to bring in Grimlock yet again. At this point, I actually need to get my rocks up myself. Depending on what type of Charizard it is, I may or may not be in a good position, as he brings in the type of Fini. Um, Tabu Fina has yet to lose HP actually, I kind of felt it was really weird to loosen my Decidueye of course, uh, knowing that it was probably the only thing who could do hefty chunks of damage towards this Pokemon. Uh, so I'll hard switch out here protecting the possible Defog as I bring in Van Height and uh, he goes for the Easy Moonblast which I felt was okay. I mean it does damage, it does a lot of damage and you get a special attack drop which means Thunderbolt is not a guarantee KO, so I need to go for Volt Switch instead, which is very unfortunate. And I'm actually going to switch in my Elisa, which is my God of War. And at this point, I really, really was thinking that, you know, he's definitely going to switch out. He's not going to try to wheel this thing around. Uh, but it goes directly for a Moonblast again, and he gets a special attack drop again. And I actually need my Elisa, since it's the only thing that possibly outspeed any potential Scarfer. So... I go for a Moonblast here, hoping for the very best, as I myself get a special attack drop, but my opponent go for a Defog, and I was like, no, this means Charizard is still active and very dangerous. But we did get that special attack drop, so that could mean that we can bring in Jolteon, so I'm not going to go for the KO here, uh, I'm actually going to bring in Jolteon, trying to get him in and lock himself into, of course, Specs Thunderbolt, as it goes for Hydro Pump, and it actually is enough to KO. So, big misplay on my side, actually, since it actually did secure the KO. But we have a given opportunity of doing something really, really, really nice, and that is that do to I really can't stress this enough, his special attack drop. I can set up Dragon Dances here. I have no fear of this Pokemon whatsoever, 
and uh, two Dragon Dance should definitely be enough to actually wrap up the game. As it goes for Moonblast, it just didn't do necessarily anything. At minus one, yeah, that's roughly 30% the best. And I just need, like I said, two Dragon Dances to cure KO, even against Tapu Fini. So he's gonna bring in Ferrothorn. Uh, Ferrothorn is such a. It's so well down already that it definitely can't take any hits from me. But while Liquidation is resisted, Crunch is not. It's neutral, and of course, Sheer Force and Life Orb, yeah, that's going down. So his two remaining mods is the Charizard. We're gonna find out whether or not it's Charizard Y or X, but at this point, it doesn't matter. I do outspeed and I am of course double the attack and it's a Charizard X but as stated liquidation is a guarantee KO at this point the game is a wrap for alligator will basically claim the last remaining mods and Charizard will just free fall out of that damage and the last one coming in is of course the Tapu Fini which actually fought back really 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 well but in the end of the day I had a given opportunity of pulling this off and I took it and I got the win I desperately needed here. Really unfortunate this video, I couldn't score the complete sweep, but at the same time, it did make the game that much more interesting, in my honest opinion. So, if anything, I really want to thank my opponent Luke, of course, for having a battle with me, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was lucky here of winning. There is not often you see an RU team versus an OU team actually coming out on top. Uh, to be honest, I think it has a lot to do with synergy. I, I tend to play better with lower tier teams, and with a matchup, it's like this. There's a more stallier, a bulkier team versus my more offensive team. I think I can wheel myself around this fairly alright. And this video really got a big opening and it actually did a lot more than I thought it ever would. So I was really happy about that. But at the same time, you know, had of course Charizard, which actually just set up one Dragon Dance, it could have just ripped apart my team. I am very aware of that. I'm lucky that didn't happen. It is one of those things like when that's when that thing's going on, yeah, that's that's a wrap. There's really no way of stopping it. So I felt happy that that situation never occurred because I feel like that was just a free sweep from my opponent's side. Uh, but yeah, with that said, thank you of course as always guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this game and if anything, you know, if you want to see more with White Hope of course, leave a like, help me become bigger, you know, stuff like that. The, 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 the general cliche is, I guess, really guys, I just, I'm just thankful for you guys watching, if anything. Uh, so yeah guys, as always, thank you for watching. I'm the third time I said it now, nice. Uh, and have a nice day, of course, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to talk about who was really better between Mega Aggron and Mega Steelix. That's the one coming out. That's kind of cool. I like that episode. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Full time now. <laughs> See you guys. Take care. Bye.